have people on the you know that are watching that basically want to learn how to start a business. Mm -hmm. They don't know really how to start a business. They don't know the tax complications with starting a business. And, you know, you help us out. You know, you do all our filings for all our entities, things like that. And it becomes very complicated, right? And it could be, like, overwhelming. Like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing, uh -huh. right? So let's start with taxes 101. Right. What's the simplest way... To start a corporation and which one should I use sure. or choose? Sure, sure. Yeah, it's a that's a that's a loaded question, Ed. Is it loaded? <laughs> okay. Why? So because it depends. You okay. know, I'm a I'm an accountant, that's what we always do. Hey, it always depends. Okay. Right? So so you know, I my first question is be, would be what what industry are you in? Like what what do you do? Okay. Right. So so you know, if, if you're owning real estate, that's a different answer than if you're a private equity guy, if you're a software developer, if you're a consultant, you know, it, it matters. Right? Okay. So let's, let's start with, I have a great idea and I want to sell merch. Okay. Okay. More questions. <laughs> okay. All right. No, it's good. It's good. All right, right. So, so are you going to have partners? Do, do you need, do you need outside funding? Let's say I don't have any money. Let's okay. say just, I just, let's just, say yeah. I need partners to come and sure. support me. So yeah, I, I've got to I've got to raise some money and I have some partners. Okay. So so what what generally the easiest way because it's the most flexible way would be an LLC. Okay. And so an LLC we can convert convert to anything later on down the road. You know you get you get private equity in here. You know the business is starting to take off. Uh, we say okay, well you know they're going to want you know their preferred return. You know they're going to want a, a bigger cut. You know they're going to put in a million dollars. You know they want five percent return on on whatever it is then the LLC allows us the flexibility to do that. Okay. How do you start an LLC? Simple. You know, you, if, you're, if you're bootstrapping it, LegalZoom, super simple. We actually set one up the other day. You know, we just started up Capital Financial. Um, and so, you know, it, it, was, it was a piece of cake. I was surprised. You know, normally I say, hey, go talk to a lawyer. Like, well, I'm, a, I'm an accountant. Yeah. You know, I'm a, you know I, I know what to do. I, I've read hundreds of operating agreements. I know how these things are structured. I know how they should look. Let's go for it. And, and it was a simple process, you know, 800 bucks, uh, no, no sweat. Legal Zoom. So, yeah. so you said a term, and, and for our viewers that don't know, and this is kind of going to be like, you know, structure 101, mm -hmm. right? It, yeah. it, 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 when you set up an LLC, an LLC is a limited liability corporation, right? Yeah, limited liability company. Okay, what does that mean? Limited Liability Corporation. Sure. So what that means is if, you know, you, your, your product blows up in someone's face, they can only take what's in the LLC. They can't go take your home, your cars, your dog, whatever it is. Got so, it. So an LLC shields you, insulates it. You know, there's always ways to pierce that veil. Um, but, you know, that's probably more for the lawyers than the accountants. But generally, LLC shields you from liabilities and, and personal liabilities. Perfect. So in the event something catastrophic happens, whatever's in the LLC is vulnerable, but right. you're not. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So it's kind of like a wall shielding you That's right. from any litigation. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then an LLC has an operating agreement. Yes. Right. So you, you open up this LLC, you go to LegalZoom and then LegalZoom goes to the IRS and, and I guess they get you a a, a new tax ID number, kind of like That's a right. social security number, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And then they give you this generic kind of operating agreement, mm -hmm. right? And what is the purpose of the operating agreement? It, it, it tells you how the business is supposed to operate. You know, it, it, it defines who's the manager, you know? And, and if it's, you know, if it's just you, you're the only person involved, you know, no partners yet, super simple, you know, just says, hey, this is what you do. This is what we're here for. Um, this is how, this is how, Taxes are supposed to work. It's very generic. Where, where it gets complicated and when you have multiple partners is probably where you need to get a legal a professional in. Got it. Yeah. Okay, okay, so let's let's simplify it. So an LLC is kind of like the gospel, right? Sure. Yeah. These are the things you can and cannot do. Yeah, the operating agreement. Yeah. That operating agreement is the gospel of, of how you can treat the partners, what powers the partners have, yep. what rights the partners have. So when you're creating an LLC with partners that are going to fund you, mm -hmm. you should actually go over terms 
before you take that money, right? That's right, yeah. Because those terms are going to go right into that operating partnership, or the, the operating agreement, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 and for, for most entrepreneurs, super mundane, super boring, but super important. You, you, you have to read it. Because, you know, that, you know, you got to go in good faith here. But, you know, there's something in there where, hey, the, the, the equity guy can remove the manager at any time, and you're the manager. <laughs> oh, my God. And so, and so and, you know, you see it happen, and you're like, well, I, I don't remember signing that. Of course you don't. You didn't read it. Right. So. Right. So, so very important to, to read an operating agreement. Now, as you mentioned, LegalZoom is good when you're the only member, right? So LLCs have... Managing members and limited members. Right. Help me understand that. Right, right. So, so when when somebody comes aboard, you know, puts in equity, you know, they're typically not the manager. You know, they'll have a say in what goes on. You know, and they may have a, a say in the direction, but ultimately, you're the manager. You're active. These guys put in money. Sometimes you have, you know, for capita, for example. You know, I have I have two partners. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm the managing member. They, of course, have a say in voting rights and what happens. You know, we generally agree on most stuff. It's accountant firms are pretty simple. So, so they're, they're not managing members, though. So I have, I have the opportunity to say, um, you know, let's go this direction. Let's go that direction. They, they get a say in it. But I, I generally have the ultimate decision making. You know, I, and, and, you know, these are my partners. These are good guys, and, and I value their opinions. Yeah. So I'm going to listen to them. I'm not going to do anything crazy and go get, you know, a, a million dollars of, of funding when we don't need it and, you know, distribute it out to myself. You know, that's, that'd be terrible. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh so, so, yeah, <laughs> but that stuff happens, believe me. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, you know, on the accounting side, trying to unwind that and, you know, and, and you know, Rob and Peter to pay Paul. And, and so that way the private equity, you know, you got other deals on the side. Just, just keep it clean, keep it simple, uh, and, and no issues generally. So hear that. See, so if you're going to start a company and you're going to start an LLC and you have partners, please, you know, operating agreements are created in draft form, right? They're right. not finalized, right? right? So the lawyers say, what do you guys want to do? Yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And then they give you a draft. Right. It's in that time when you want to read the draft, like very carefully and go, Whoa, wait a minute, right? That's right. Yeah. I don't even like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ask questions, you know, because, you know, generally most lawyers have boilerplate operating agreements, right? And so, okay, you know, so-and-so is a managing member. This guy is a tax matters partner. Um, these are the rights of the managing member. But it's all boilerplate. You know, that's not how you would necessarily want. There, there's a different managing member than a tax matters partner. You know, you don't, you, sometimes you don't want the same, you know, capital financial we have a, a guy who does, you know, financial services. Doesn't make sense to have him to be the tax matters partner, right? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I do the taxes. I'll right, do that. Right, right, you right. know, but he's the managing member. You know, he controls and how the how it operates and how, you know, all the compliance and all that madness. Uh, I, don't, I don't want any piece of that. Right. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I'm trying to be passive as much as possible. So. So, so passive and active. Is that the same as managing member and limited member? Generally. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally, yeah. Yeah, and the taxation of an active member and a passive member are different, and it gets complicated and ugly. I mean, we can get into it, but... I've got this LLC. Mm -hmm. I'm starting my company. Let's call it ABC LLC. Sure. I'm the managing member, and I've got limited members who've given me money. I've got this operating agreement that we all agreed upon, which is the gospel. Yeah. Okay, what is the benefit of actually having an LLC? So, so the, the benefit of having an LLC is, is it, gives you, it gives you structure, you know. And, you know, for, at this point right now, it's for liability purposes. You know, it's, it's that shield. Um, it, it makes taxation a little bit easier. You know, now we got new forms to file. If we have multiple partners, uh, you know, it allocates the income, you know, this way, that way. This guy gets this. This guy gets this. We, we know how it's all supposed to work, right? And you get that liability shield. No, no, no necessarily tax benefits at this point you know the tax benefits is is in the transactions it's transactional so you know if if we want to convert the what's nice about an llc it's easy to convert okay. right so and, and so you know we have an llc we say well maybe you know this isn't the most optimal structure for us you know and so what we can do is we can convert this to an s corporation simple filing of paperwork you know the, op the operating still governs 
But now that you're an LLC, tax as an S-corporation. Different rules for S-corporations. You know, it's a little more rigid for sure. And, and, you know, everything has to go pro rata. You know, so that that 5% preferred return that we talked about earlier, you can't do that in an S-corporation. There's ways to structure around it possibly, Mm -hmm. but you can't do it in an S-corporation. Everything has to be varied by the book. But for the active member... There's no more self-employment tax. So now we got to talk about wages, and you know we've had this conversation a hundred times. Uh, oh <laughs> so, my god! So, so, so let's right. so let me break it down. Okay, so I'll use me, right? Mm-hmm. So we have LLC, mm-hmm. and the reason why I choose to have an LLC for right now mm-hmm. is because I get guaranteed payments. That's right. Right, and those. So I'm not an employee, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not subject to W-2 and all that other stuff and getting Mm -hmm. smashed. Mm -hmm. But as an active partner, now I'm responsible for my taxes on my own. And that is determined by how much I write off compared to how much I've taken in. Can you explain that a little bit? Right, right. So so as an active member of an LLC, you know, basically consultant of, of crowdfunding, right? Uh, you, you're the CEO, you get guaranteed payments. It's kind of like a salary, but, you know, since you're a partner, you don't, you don't necessarily get a salary. This is how it works. It, uh, the distinction is, is odd to me, <laughs> but <laughs> 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 that's the thing about taxes. It doesn't always make sense, but, you know, sometimes you got to go rules are rules. That's it. You know, I don't know why. That's just how it is. And so, and so, you know, we take that income. You have some expenses to write off against that income, the guaranteed payments, the salary, uh, we do that, you know, through the S corporation, right? And then, and then uh, that income still flows through to your where ultimately where your tax happens on your personal tax return. So these are all flow through entities, and that's what we call flow through. So it's an LLC. S corporations are all flow through entities. So there's no tax at the entity level for these these types of companies, but it flows through to you. Okay, so flow through entities mean I have this LLC up here, mm-hmm. right? And at the bottom, it's the warm body, That's right. Edward Fernandez. Yes. Everything comes up on the top here, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it flows through and comes down, and me, the warm body, <laughs> gets hit with the taxes, <laughs> right. right? That's right. Ed Fernandez likes the tax at the LLC because right. there's nothing. Ed Fernandez at the at the S Corp likes that tax because there's nothing there. <laughs> and then when it gets here, <laughs> you Ed Fernandez has a problem. Me, kaboom. That's right. Ed right? Fernandez doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. So that's the merch business right yes. uh-huh. okay now i want to be i want to get into real estate okay am i using an llc <clears throat> yeah okay real why estate. uh same, same reasons okay. it's a liability protection um but with real estate you tend to form multiple llc's right so for each acquisition general you know if it's a single family home you know 200 grand yeah you know let's not we don't have to get too crazy but if you're buying like an apartment complex senior living facility whatever it is you, you'll want separate LLCs because you want this senior living facility here, this senior li- facility here in separate LLCs. Cause if anything happens here, you know, you get sued. It doesn't hit that. It doesn't hit this one. Got you. So if you have, if you have multiple senior living facilities in one and you know, there's a wrongful death or whatever happens there, you know, they're, they're going to go after the, both. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Everything. So, so you, you, you bifurcate your risk through multiple LLCs that, and, and, and real estate, Always, always, always in an LLC. Never in a corporation. Never in an S corporation. Lots of rules of why, um, but never in, in, a, in a corporation. You put well, why would you use an S corp or a C corp? In what situation would you do that in? I, I would use an S corp for professional services, consulting. If you're if you're the only owner, S corps makes sense because you know we can we can play with the self-employment tax and the wages, you know, everything goes to you. There's no special allocations, simple, but you know, there's, there's tax savings there and there's planning we can do with benefit planning and, and things like that. So benefit plan, like 401ks and, and IRAs and things like that, right. that you get, you know, if you put money into that, mm-hmm. you know, your, your taxes are deducted. So let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's wind back. Okay. What is subject to tax? And, and, and let me, kind of get deeper into the question is so and I'm sorry guys but I you know I'm not trying to make you guys feel like you guys don't know anything but some people might watch this show and may not know anything right you, you know this is the one thing that I've 
realized being a CPA yeah. for 20 plus years now, we take for granted what we know and what, and when we, you know, what, what seems obvious to me and probably to you isn't necessary yeah. to everybody. And yeah. obviously some people are, you know, rolling over, oh yeah, of course, escort. But um, I'm surprised by, you know, the people just don't know. They don't have, they don't have, they don't have good counsel. They don't have good CPAs that explain it to them. Sure. And so, and so they just kind of go, oh, here's my P&L and, and, and here's my balance sheet and prepare my taxes and spit out, you know, spit out my tax number to me. And so, you know, and, and, and so getting a little bit sideways here, but it's important to have a good relationship with your CPA, to have the conversations, sure. you know, to meet regularly with your CPA. Maybe not so much in the beginning. It, it is actually fairly simple. But, you know, when you start making money and we start making millions, hundreds of thousands, you know, Taxes are big expense. <laughs> oh yeah, oh right. yeah, right. Big. right? And you, you don't want that. You 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 got other things to do. You yeah. want to buy houses. You want to buy cars. You want to buy the. <laughs> you don't want to buy. <laughs> you, do, you do not want to pay taxes. You know, and yes. then that goes. <laughs> I hate them. And then you're you're buying houses and taxes at the same time. It, it, gets, it just sucks. <laughs> that's right. So okay, yeah. I make a a bunch of money. Let's just say. Okay. okay. Is there a way to show the IRS? that I made less money than I actually received. For example, if I brought in a million dollars and off that million dollars, I went out to restaurants, I put in gas, I bought clothes, I have office space, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Doesn't that lower what I show the IRS as taxable income. Yes. Okay. For example, if I go to a restaurant, I can write off that as long as I'm talking about business, right? Sure. It doesn't matter what restaurant I went to, mm -hmm. right? It could be right. the most expensive restaurant. It could be Taco Bell, right? Right. But if I'm talking about my business in one shape or form, mm -hmm. I can legitimately write that off. I know it's very granular and mm -hmm. down to the to the micro level, mm -hmm. but I think it's important to kind of help people understand, hey, these things are okay. Right. They're not like illegal. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, meals exactly. You know, yes, of course we all need to eat. So, but you know, part of the part of business is having lunches with folks, you know, and, and having conversations and, you know, maybe it leads to business, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily matter as long as maybe you're trying to get business. Um, you know, difficult to to say, you know, I'm having dinner with my wife as a business expense, but there's times when you are in business with your wife, but, but the IRS doesn't like that. You know, we've seen it, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll can it every time. Cause you don't need to talk about business with your wife or you don't need to go out to dinner to talk about business. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, but, but you know, there, there's things, you know, cars, for example, this is another area that I'm always surprised about, you know, people don't, realize our, our potential deductions. So, so cars, you know, we can deduct whether they're leased, th there's different rules, you know, for bigger SUVs, you know, we get a big deduction these days. Um, IRS still hasn't shut that down. Um, and so, and so, you know, if you have, you know, your business percentage of your car, you, this SUV, you know, you're going out to dinner with, with this guy, going to this client, you know, you're traveling, you're, you're bringing merchandise to the stores in your SUV, at least in the beginning, all deductions. All deductible. We can we can take big deductions for the car. What's nice about cars that most a lot of people, you know, especially new entrepreneurs, don't realize is that you can finance the car. So so you don't have to come out of pocket a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars to get a hundred thousand dollar deduction, right? So you finance it, you're on the hook for it, and then and then we can take this big what we call depreciation deduction, bonus depreciation, section one seventy nine. You know, all the same stuff you know you hear in real estate applies to these cars as well. Got it. So you see, so the point we're trying to make is, is that if you're trying to start a business, any type of business, lower level, entry level mm -hmm. structure would be an LLC. And there's a ton of benefits for doing that. Okay. So now I've, I've, I've got my business going, right? It was me by myself. Yep. You and Wade. <laughs> right. Me and Wade. <laughs> now I have 10 employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... I, they're employees. They're not. They're not partners. They're not limited members. Mm. They're, they're employees. That's right. Should I change from an LLC to some kind of S corp or C corp? Not necessary. Okay. Nope. nope. You can still structure. 
Uh, you know, at that point, um, still, still can be an LLC, still can be an S-Corp. When should that trigger happen? Is it based on how big my company is, how much revenue the company is making? Right. It, 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 I would say it's a net income. Thing. Okay. It, you know, when we go from an LLC to an S-Corp, you know, because there's more... There's more of me <laughs> in an S corporation, right? You got you have to, you have another tax filing. It's a little more complicated. Um, now we got to talk about you know wages or whatever. So I would say when you start, kind of hit that two hundred thousand dollars of net income, okay, that's probably when you start considering switching from uh, an LLC to an S corp. So there's gross income, right? And there's net income, right? What is the difference between the two? Right, gross income is I make. You know, I brought in ten million dollars this year, right? Okay. Right. Net income. You know, we have our deductions, we have our payroll, we have our cars that we just talked about, we have uh, meals, we have um, you know inventory, whatever it is. You know, cost of goods sold, and, and then after all those deductions, we get to a net income number. So after all the deductions, we started with ten, deduct. Now we're at two million. Let's say. So, so that's kind of what I consider your taxable income. That's what we got to worry about. Got it. So right. it cost me eight million in expenses to put two million in my pocket, mm -hmm. and now okay, that's if that two million dollars was in an LLC, mm -hmm. which I get to enjoy all the time. <laughs> there's a term called phantom income, <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> That's right. Phantom. Phantom it's like income. a ghost. Right. <laughs> yeah. You can't see it, right? Yeah, you don't see it until it don't, it it don't, don't exist you. <laughs> until you get your tax bill. Mm -hmm. Explain stupid phantom income. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you know, if you're LLC, and especially when there when there's you know multiple partners, what'll happen is you know my net income's two million dollars. I, I got two hundred thousand dollars, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And so, I, I, the physical dollars was two hundred thousand, right? But right. my net income on paper is two million. That's right. How does that happen? Right. So, so you don't distribute the money out of the business because you're growing the business. That's what you want to do. You don't want two million dollars of, of income. You want ten million dollars of net income, right? Right. And so you keep that money in the business. Well, I always says, well, thank you. We're going to take our haircut off of that because you chose to reinvest it, and, and so and so they're going to tax you regardless if you took the money out. So, so you know, in this scenario, you have $2 million sitting in the bank in your LLC. You know, maybe you took out, you know, 200 grand like we talked about. So now there's $1.8 million. There, there's money to pay taxes, <laughs> but, but you don't, you know, you, you, you know, you call it dry powder, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want the dry powder to be able to do, you know, to close on deals, to, you know, whether it's buy inventory, to hire staff. You know, the IRS says that's great, but you can do it less 50%. Oh, so listen to that, right? So this, let's just make that clear. In this analogy, right, mm -hmm. we have two, we have, we, we've got, we've received $200,000 of cash. Right, distributions. Distributions. Right. I put that money in my bank account and I left $1.8 million in the company to grow the company. Mm -hmm. I'm taxed on that. Yeah, because the income flows through. Jesus. <laughs> so... Get ready now. That's okay, right. so how how do I avoid phantom income? You pay expenses. <laughs> you you distribute it out. You you know you can distribute it out, but you need that money. You right. need the money to grow the business. So you got to you get what what we like to do, and this is sometimes in operating agreements too, where where there's a there's kind of a tax distribution, right? You kind of Kind of the general number that we see in operating agreements is, you know, hey, to in order that we can cover phantom income is that we'll distribute, you know, 40% of the net profit. So let's go back to $2 million. Yeah. We're going to make distributions of $800,000. Okay. And so that way your taxes are at least covered for, for the phantom income that we're just going to keep rolling and, and build the business. <sighs> okay. It's not fun. It's not fun. No. So, and, and, and that's all based on different... Okay, is it are, are the rules the same regardless of what state you live in? Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 they're not, of not. Right? Of course not. You know, they're different, and you know, Nevada has zero income tax, right? And so, you know, California has you know upwards of thirteen percent income taxes, and so, and then, and then there's different rules. So, 
you know, Fed, you know, we talked about federal, you know, we talked about depreciation. Fed, you know, allows a hunt, you know, to be determined, but a hundred percent a bonus depreciation. California's not doing that. <laughs> so, so what's depreciation? So, so, you know, we talked, we bought the car for a hundred grand, yeah. right? That's not, that's an asset right now, right? Okay. It's a car, right? And, and then when we depreciate it, we get a deduction for it for, for tax purposes, right? Even though the car is still worth, you know. So 70, does the depreciation right. mean wear and tear? Technically, yes. Technically, yes, yeah, right. right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm supposed to represent The that, car yeah. cost me $100,000. Right. I'm going to use the car for my business. Mm -hmm. The car now, because I'm putting miles on it, mm -hmm. is, de is going down in value. Is that the reason why I can write some of that off on depreciation just because the asset is going down or depreciating? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously, you know, hey, you buy a car on, on December 20th. By the end of the year, it's not worth zero. Right. But in the IRS's eyes, I guess it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, but on your balance sheet, because I on, mean, the, the, on IRS side, it's not. But in, on the balance sheet, we could say, yes, it is. Well, yeah, the balance sheet is worth something, right? You right. Know, the balance sheet is, well, no, it's actually worth, you know, you know, drive it off the lot. Maybe it's worth 75000 Yeah. still. So, so you know, so that, that's what's nice, too. When we talk about lending and getting financing, right? So n now there's a different, you know, your balance sheet's super important, right? Yeah. You know, you go to get life insurance. You go to get, get a loan. <laughs> get a loan. Right. 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 You know, you, you want to show, you want to show assets, right? But, but assets aren't a deduction generally. And, and, and so, and so, you, but we don't want to pay taxes. Right, <laughs> so, right. So you want, you want, you want to show as much net income as you can to get a loan, but then you don't want to pay any taxes. This is always the conundrum too, is, is, you know. Oh, both. so, so let me stop you right sure. there. Yeah. So what you're saying is, if I bought this car mm -hmm. and it's on my balance sheet as an asset, right. asset means what am I worth? That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What am I worth? If I depreciate that asset mm -hmm. to save taxes, meaning that hundred thousand dollars I depreciated it down to eighty thousand, that's right. I get a deduction of eighty thousand off my taxes, mm -hmm. but it comes punching me in the face when it comes to go getting a loan because instead of my asset being a hundred thousand dollars, it's now only twenty thousand. Yeah, and, and most <laughs> most banks. Most underwriters understand, like, hey, it, yeah, it's not worth zero. Right. You know? Yeah, even though they took a, a $100,000 tax deduction. So they, they, they typically add it back um, and say, okay, no, the asset really is probably worth at least, you know, you know $75,000. So it's really not a, you know, a, a double-edged sword. No, no, no. M most, m most banks understand it. But we, you know, you know, underwriters, you know, and accountants were the same way. Oh, beep, boop, bobby, beep. These are my metrics and these are my numbers and you know so so it depends on the underwriter um, but most most you can explain it too you know where, where we see this where where this is most interesting let's say it's real estate right sure. you say you're buying an apartment complex I, I don't know about you at least recently you know <laughs> nothing's going down anymore right you right. know it's, it's all it's all, up, it's all so. it's going up and up yeah. and so you know you buy for a million it's worth two million dollars you know in, in three years or whatever it is and so and so that that's where. That's where things get interesting, right? And when you're talking about financing for real estate, uh, buy, buying, um, you know, they really know it's worth, you know, two million dollars. But you know, that's the great thing about real estate is that we can, you can, we can dice up this piece of real estate. You know, we talk about cost segregation studies, and you know, real estate's a great asset because you never really have income there, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's always making you money. You know, you're always cash, you know, generally cash flow positive, yeah, yeah, yeah. tax negative. You know, that's that's. That's the gold standard. So we, we talked a lot about LLCs, you know, and uh, we said, uh, you know, there's a there's a time to transition to a corporation, right. right? The difference between an LLC, which if if I'm just starting off, mm -hmm. limited liability corporation. Company. Company. Yes. Not corporation. That's right. Yeah. Limited liability company right. versus corporation right what is the difference um generally it's flow through so 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 there's s corporation one which we touched on and then there's c corporation okay you know and, and c corporations are are generally reserved for bigger companies you know there's, there's rarely an instance where i would recommend a c corporation unless 
you have a short timetable to sell out. You what know, does that mean, sell out? So, so you know, if you're if you're building this thing, building this thing up, and you know, you know, Amazon's got their eye on you. Oh, you're trying and, to get out. Yeah, and, 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 and yeah, you're just gonna build it just to sell it. You're gonna be right. acquired, right? That's right. Okay. Right. So, so then you would use a C corp. Right. Because of the tax savings. Tax savings. Yep. Got yeah, it. Because there's there's potential, you know, small business stock exclusions. Uh, you know, it's rare, but you know, you can possibly exclude up to ten million dollars. So in an LLC, right. limited liability company, you have units. Yes. In a corporation, you have shares. That's right. Yep. What is the difference between that? Um, it's it, it's it's the nomenclature, right? In an LLC, in a partnership, you have partners. In a corporation, you have shareholders, right? Okay. It, it, you know what's nice about a C corporation is you can do the preferred return again. You have preferred shares, you have A shares, B shares, so you can kind of dice up the equity, you know, based on when people come in too. You know, so you know you start you start getting some headwind here. You know, uh, you know maybe it's not Amazon, maybe it's Timu that you know they <laughs> they, they they put in the first round, um, and, and so and so you're able to to bifurcate the shares and the prices and what you're in on and percentage of equity. So, so you're talking about the capital stack, the capital stack. Okay, so think of a capital stack as a stack of pancakes. <laughs> okay, right. let's let's make it as simple as that's possible, good. right? Yeah, that's good, yeah. right? So. And I'll use a piece of real estate, uh -huh. okay? On, oh. No, on a capital <laughs> stack? <laughs> oh, you can do it, but not in a C-Corp. Okay. <laughs> so, We're selling pancakes. Right, let's say I buy a $20 million apartment building, mm -hmm. and I have a 50% loan, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. That debt component is my bottom pancake, okay? okay? Because that's the one that's going to get paid first, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So if I sell the building... The bank gets their money first. That's right. Okay. Then on the second pancake is, let's say, my equity, mm -hmm. right? My $10 million, right. right? Notice that when you talk about capital stack, mm -hmm. the one on the top is the last one to get paid, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's a certain, the, yeah, it's a the one on the <laughs> bottom is the one that's going to get paid. That's right. So the more pancakes you have stacked mm -hmm. in your structure, yeah. the more risk it is for that investor Right. And that means you got to pay them something very, very enticing for them to be the last one to get paid. Is That's that right. correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And it's often at the cost of your equity. Right. And so, and so, you know, you know, where you were a hundred percent owner now you're a 10% owner and, <laughs> and you're the last guy to get paid. After. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's where VC I, money comes in. Right. Yeah. Do not take venture <laughs> capitalist money because they will take your company away from you. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we we had a, a guy, you know, nine figure exit, you know. nine figure exit, nine figure exit. Oh my god! Right, <laughs> right. Big, big, big money. Super good guy. Good, good guy. You know, had had a great company. Um, you know, and you know, venture capital came in, uh, and and now they, you know, uh, you know, stay on for, stay on for two years. You know, hey, nine figures. You know. All right, you want me to stay on? I'm happy to leave, right? Generally, most people, um, you know, but, the, you know, they want it on for two years. It didn't last two months. The guy built a super profitable company, and within two months of, of the acquisition, he's gone. And, and, you know, he's probably okay. With, you know, he was okay with it. Yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> because, you know, he has nice He got his big money. He's got his big money. But, yeah. but, you know, you have to be ready to let go because venture capital will take it and do it their own way. How would a VC or venture capitalist company that is going to give you money write terms up? What what kind of generic terms would a VC look for? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, they'll they'll limit your management capabilities. You know, now they have this board of directors. Okay. Right. And they say, okay, well, you know, you you're you answer to the board of directors, and nine, you know, nine out of the ten seats are the venture capital folks, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so, and they'll say, okay, no, you can't do that, can't do that, we're not doing that. And, and so they took control. They did. They did. They did. Yeah, they, right. they so, control. So right. here's fifty million dollars. Uh -huh. We're gonna make sure that you make the right decisions that we are okay with. <laughs> Right. With using that money, that's right, right, right. The, you know, the, the, it's so silly, right? You know, that you'll make the right. You, you've built this company, and they, you know, they they've invested. You know, they put in seven figure investment, eight figure investments, but now we control it because we know better than you. And, and 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 so you know, you have you have to find the right venture capital partner too. So the 
not not all venture capital firms are the same that we've seen. Sure. Um, and, and so that that's going to be key too. You know, the, everyone's going to come knocking. Be patient. You know, once you get to that stage, and you know, hopefully you do. You know, the reality is it's rare, right? So so just be patient. You know, you you have a trajectory. You have a goal. You know, stick stick to that. And and yeah, you're gonna have to give up a little bit, definitely. But as long as you have the ability to make that those decisions, uh, and, and and what what's gotten you to this place, you're able to continue to do that. So I know we we kind of went off to VC and <laughs> pancakes and capital stack. <laughs> what are the things that you've seen business owners do that they should not be doing? Yeah, you know, if you have partners and you're not a, a you know, you're not going according to the operating agreement. You're not you're not doing things. You know, I'm the managing partner. Um, you know, capital, let's say we have a million dollars in the bank, but you know, our, our equity splits are, you know, 50 20 20 5 10 5. <laughs> <Six. laughs> I'm an accountant. <laughs> um, and, you know, but I'm a you know, I got I want to buy this house. You know, I want to buy these other things. I want to buy some cows. Um, <laughs> you took seven hundred grand, which you only took fifty. That's right. Five hundred grand. That's right. Right. You yeah. took seven hundred grand, and you um, left the rest of the partners, and the partners find out. That's right. Yeah. Through the tax returns. Yeah, through the tax returns, like you know, oh, Kevin, ni nice new Ferrari. You know, I'm driving a Camry over here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I don't, I don't recall as being that different. You know, what else you got going on, or you know, where? And the that's when they start asking. Uh, I'd that's like right. to see the books. Yeah, that's right. You know, when, when, you know, let's, let's say you have, multi, you know, we've seen this where there's real estate development, right? You know, you're building this, this, this complex, right? You have this complex over here and this one's about ready to sell, but you know, you, but you get a loan, <laughs> you know, you got this loan. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to put money over here. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to start funding this one. Right. And, and, and this happens a lot, not a lot with real estate, but it happens frequently. You keep rolling, 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 rolling deals. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're caught with your pants down yeah. because you don't have any money to pay back the guys who originally invested. Right. So, you, you know, it's a, kind of the old Ponzi scheme stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and Rob and Peter to pay Paul to fund this deal, to fund this deal, to fund this deal. But, you know, real estate doesn't go up forever. You know, you, you, it's went in the, you know, what was it, 2008 or whatever. We saw a ton of this stuff. Exactly. You know, and like, you know, these guys were making <laughs> millions and millions and millions of dollars. You're like, oh man, he's got a helicopter. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, and, and, and it's a nice tax deduction. Uh, <laughs> oh, a helicopter? Yeah, oh, that's sure. good to know. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you know, that, I mean, we, yeah, side note, but helicopters, you know, actually appreciate value too. So, oh. yeah, and you know, even planes, you know, I've seen, you know, guy bought a plane for a million five, sold it for three in the okay. next year. So, Okay. You know, planes aren't necessarily a terrible investment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you can get there. <laughs> but but that that's where that's where we see things start going sideways. When you get greedy, uh, you you start you start taking money off the table from this deal to that deal. You know, just just do it. Just do what it says. So going back now to simplifying, you know, starting a business. You know, there are companies out there that'll help do your your filings, right? Mm -hmm. Like like your company, right? Yeah. So there's a responsibility when you create an LLC, mm -hmm. there's a responsibility to pay state fees and things like that. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to have that on your plate, right? There are companies where like, you know, there's a company out there called do my LLC, yes, right? Yeah. Do my LLC. They take it over. They'll let you know when you have to pay this and pay that and file mm -hmm. this and file that, right? Because you already have plates in the air That's spinning right. for running a business, right? Yeah. And you're trying to raise money. You're trying to sell. You're, you're trying to grow. The last thing you need to do is miss <laughs> state filings That's right. and, 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 and not pay your state fees because then yeah. what happens? Right, because they can shut you down. You know, so this is what we see this frequently too. You know, people neglect their filings. You know, they're, they're running 100 miles an hour. And I get it. The last thing you want to do is wor worry about the books and the accounting and this receipt, that receipt, you know, there's money in the bank, right? <laughs> this is where, this is where entrepreneurs get, get screwed up. It's like, Hey, all, all I need to know is how much money is in the bank. Right. But well, that's not all the government needs to know. And so, <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> and, so and so, and, and so, you know, you, you know, you kind of neglect the filings. It goes a couple of years and like, okay, well now I need to get caught up. Right. Because what happens is, you know, the California secretary of state tells, sends you a letter and says, Hey, you haven't paid your 800 bucks. Oh, you haven't paid your, you haven't filed taxes for a few years. We're going to suspend 
your corporation. So now it's you, now you're you you don't have a corporation. Right, right. In theory, you know you're shut down. You're, you're shut down. You, you can't. You shouldn't operate. You can't operate. If you get sued, you lose. Um, so it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And and and, and see, and what we're saying is, the, the fees are only eight hundred bucks a year. Right. And then if you have a good CPA, that CPA is going to know when you should have your books closed. Yeah. When you should start getting prepared for your taxes so that, you know, especially here in California, the franchise tax board, Impressive. that they don't, they don't play. No, no. I, I would rather deal with the IRS than the franchise the, tax board. Right. So my point is, guys and ladies and gentlemen, is that, you know, if you start your company and you start your LLC, you know, there are companies out there that will do that for you. And it's worth paying them the fee because not doing what you're supposed to be doing right. will end your business. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Do you guys do you guys help with that stuff? We, of of course, we help out with the tax filings. Mm -hmm. You know the you know and the eight hundred dollars and keeping you compliant. And you say, hey, I mean, you know what? With with all the various entities, <laughs> we had a recent conversation. He gets spammed by us <laughs> because he, he gets. I'm like, dude, stop spamming stop, me, bro. Yeah, all right, we're spamming <laughs> Wade. <laughs> uh, um, but you know, you know, for the most part, you know, people have one or two LLCs. It shouldn't be too complicated. You know, because they're gonna, there's gonna come a time, you know, like like you, like I'm, I'm done dealing with, with my books. Yeah. Right. I don't want to have to bootstrap anymore. Yeah. Because you're, you're gonna go and do more profitable things. Yeah. You know, you're doing this deal, that deal, forming this company, that company. You know, leave that to somebody else. Right. Leave that to professionals. You're gonna screw it up anyway. <laughs> you're yeah. I'm gonna do I, a good job. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's right. Right. So you have to find people that you trust. And people that will do a good job and keep you informed, meet with you, talk to you, pick up your phone call, text message, whatever it is. So that way you can focus on, you know, the last thing you want to do is, you know, you're just going down the road, making money. And the next thing you know, uh, you get this letter from the franchise tax board. Hey, you're Kevin, done. what's this? Uh, you, what, what, <laughs> you didn't do this? <laughs> right. Dude, dude, now we got to get on the phone. We got to try to reinstate it. We got to yeah. file your taxes. You're, you're, you got to stop doing business until we fix this. Right. That's not good. Okay. No. So, a lot of investors say, Ed, you know, my CPA sucks. Mm -hmm. Help me understand what's a good CPA versus a horrible CPA. <laughs> so the, the most common thing that we hear, you know, when, when we're picking up new clients is my, my CPA doesn't talk to me. You know? I hear that all the time. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, uh, you know, I sent them an email and, you know, I don't hear anything for a week. I sent him another email, just super unresponsive, right? And it's, it's terrible. I, I hate hearing it. You know, when a client sends me an email, you know, you know, oh, here's my financials received, you know, so it doesn't go in the black hole, right? Because you yeah. know how it goes. Like yeah. you send an email and you're like, they get it, they acknowledge it, it's kind of important to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they don't hear anything about it. You know, then, you know, CPAs aren't proactive, you know, they, they get the, the DST statement or whatever, and, you know, hopefully there's more going on. Um, and they just dump numbers into the the program, program spits out a tax number, send it off. They do uh, their job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they don't give you a strategy. Yeah, exactly. So if your CPA is not responding and not responding to your emails or responding to your voicemails in, a, in a, an appropriate time frame, mm -hmm. fire them. That's what I would do. Absolutely. Right. Get rid of them. Fire them. They're not worth it. You know what's going on? They have too many clients mm -hmm. and their stinking quality control is out of, it doesn't even exist. Yeah. They don't have the staffing, right, right to handle mm -hmm. the volume of business. And mm -hmm. you're just a number. Right. And remember, you're the one on the hook for the taxes, not this individual. That's so right. they really don't care. So, yeah. so fire them. Yeah. What is a good CPA? Good CPA, responsive. You know, sets up meetings with you. Like, don't get me wrong. You're not going to get this for 400 bucks. <laughs> you know, from, from, from H and R Block, H and R Block, you know, your cousin Turbo Tax. That's right. Like, it it costs money. Sure. You know, and and, and you're going to find a good CPA. Um, you know, don't you know, do 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 your research. You know, talk. You know, ask. You know, ask a guy like Ed. Like, hey, who's your CPA? <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time, bro, by the way. I know, I know. I know. All I the do, time. I do appreciate you. Um, and, 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 you know, talk to guys who you trust, right? Talk to, you know, do you like your CPA? You know, and they'll tell you, oh, you know, he's pretty good, but, you know, you, all, all the same stories. Um, and, and you know how it goes, too. You know, price isn't everything, but 
you know, when you get a diamond from Walmart, you're like, mm, I don't know if that's a real diamond, right? That's right. Exactly. You know, when you got a diamond from Tiffany's, yes, it's more expensive, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're you're convinced, you know, this is what so it's you says. get what you pay for. That's right. That, that, get- that, that's, that's a problem a lot of times. Like, people expect the world, and they only want to pay 400 bucks. You know, we, we get this all the time. You know, oh, you know it's going to be $5,000 to prepare your tax return. I paid, oh, I paid $1,000 last year. Well, Why you grew your business. <laughs> right. Why should you ball? Right. Exactly. Why are you looking for a new CPA? Yeah. Right. 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 So, so, you know, and we're going we're gonna to save you 10 times that. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, and we're going we're gonna to set up meetings, and, and we're going to have the strategy sessions, and, and, you know, you're going to be comfortable with your filing. And I'm going to be responsive. If you have a question, should I buy this car, that car, whatever it is, yeah, we're going we're gonna to answer you. You know, when I'm about to do a transaction, I call you. That's right. Right. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, this is what I'm supposed to do. How should I do it? That's right. Right. And you say, uh, okay, because you know my situation personally. Yeah. Right. And you'll say, okay, you need to do it this way, this way, make the money, make sure the money comes from this entity to this entity, right. and we're good. Yeah. Why? Because you're preparing for the taxes in the future, right? That's right. And also, too, it's much more expensive to unwind that mess, right? If you go, <laughs> if you go and just do something crazy, you know, like, oh, I got this. I'm going to, you know, $10, $10 million from this entity, whatever it is, you know, now, uh, oh, then you call up Kev, uh, this thing kind of blew up in my face. You know, we got we to gotta unwind this. It's much more expensive. You know, we can have a conversation, you know, sure. like the, the entity selection, right? You know, I, I know this backwards and forwards, you know, and, and, you know, generally you have a good relationship with the client. I know what you should do. You know, I'm going to form a new entity. I'm going to do this. Oh, beep, 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 this, this is what you should do. You know, you go and, and file a C corp and you put your real estate in there. I'm like, Ed, what'd you do that? What'd you do? Yeah. <laughs> what'd you, Are you do? Out of your mind. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you're going to call me and you're going to say, Hey, what should I do? Oh yeah, just do that. Okay. So just, you know, you kind of listen to what Kevin's saying, you know, that's, that's a good CPA. A good CPA is a partner in your business. They will take the time to give you sound advice to make sure that what you're trying to do in the future is accretive or a benefit to mm-hmm. you. So don't go to a CPA that you're going to pay 400 bucks for and think that you're going to find, the, you know, you're going to get the, the stars and the moon. Mm-hmm. You're not. Pay a little bit more money. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe instead of 400 bucks, it might cost you two grand. Mm-hmm. But that two grand, believe me, that CPA is going to be like, okay, that's a, that's a priority mm-hmm. client. Let me be responsive. Yeah. Am I tracking? That's, uh, 100%. You know, because in, in the CPA industry, you know, if you can believe this, there's not many, not many people want to be a CPA anymore. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to be a CPA. <laughs> right, exactly. Everyone wants to be a, a an podcaster. An entrepreneur. Yeah, everyone's in the gig That's economy. like the gig now. Right, right. No, no one wants to be a CPA. So so it, it's so tough the, to find talent. So the industry is shrinking, but the demand continues to grow. Absolutely. And so that's why you've got all these, you know, I see H&R Block, TurboTax, no. all these commercials. But if you don't know how to even deduct things right you're, and you're just pushing numbers into a software right. you're leaving a ton of money on the table you're right? gonna get it wrong yeah yeah exactly you know if you're a w-2 you got your mortgage interest you know some some dividends turbo tax is fine you know but if you have a business you you can't do it on your own you just you're gonna miss something you're gonna even if or maybe you're too aggressive on expenses like you know there's red flags right you you know when, you know, if you have $100,000 of income and $140,000 of travel, that's a red flag, <laughs> right? <laughs> it might be real, yeah. you know, and we, we see this, you know, and, and there's certain industries where, yeah, that makes sense because, you know, it, it takes time to build this up and get a pop. Sure. But it doesn't look great, you know, and the IRS, the IRS looks at things in a vacuum, right? They don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't take the expanse of your business if you're like an investment banker, for example, and... And you didn't make any money this year, but you show a bunch of expenses. And this year you make $20 million. You know, they, they say, oh, well, this year you didn't make any money and you have 100000 Yes, understandably. So, so then, you know, we have to explain to the IRS what you do. And, and so that's another thing. You know, if you get an, if you get an audit letter, you know, don't, don't do it yourself. <laughs> oh, an audit letter. You're meaning right. like, we don't believe you. Right, you know, they, they, or we right. have we have questions. <laughs> That's right. We have a lot of questions. Right, on tax you know, returns. you know, there, there's some there's some things we want to look at. You know, send us your tax, 
you know, t- send us your tax papers and then, you know, and, and a good CPA, I have it. I have it at, at a, at a click of a, a mouse, right. You know, yeah. like we, we keep it, we have it. Okay. RS agent, here you go. Um, and then, you know, the, the last more questions. Okay. Oh, well, let's look at your meals. Who is this with? Who's this with? Who's this? Who's this? And you're like, well, and the reality is, Hey, no one keeps that detailed of records. Sure. So they'll always find something. Okay. Right. You know, the, you know, show me the man, I'll show you the crime. Right. <laughs> and so, and so, you know, we say, okay, well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you half those meals, you know, because. Okay. So then it'll adjust your taxes. Right. Yeah. And okay. You know, you're gonna have to pay additional taxes, maybe some penalties. Uh, it depends on how. It's not like you're going to jail. Generally, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you know, in closing, do you have any advice that you can give to the listeners that's right off the top of your head that might benefit them right now? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, what just comes to my mind is just take the time to do this stuff right. You know, if you have to pay somebody, because, you know, especially on, on the start startup phase, these decisions can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not millions. So do your diligence. Don't do it yourself. You know, if, if it's, you know, if, it, if it's an easy, you know, if it's, you know, if it's just a consulting deal, you know, you want to protect yourself, you know, go, go ahead with the LLC. But, you know, just ask somebody who's competent, you know, ho- you know, Buy, buy an hour of a CPA, any quality CPA worth their time. Just, hey, help me out here. Um, what, what should I do? Call somebody. But this is a big decision, you know, and no one wants to deal with taxes, but they do when the IRS comes calling, when there's a big tax bill and you could have done it this way. So just spend the money on professionals, you know, whether it's your lawyer, whether it's your banker, whether it's your CPA, they should be paying dividends for you and, and, and ask them, you know, ask them, what, what did you do for me this year? We've had that conversation <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll sit across the table and we're, we're silent for a bit and Ruth, Ruth is in on the conversation and we sit there like, okay, I got this other idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so cool, man. No, yeah. but, uh, where can people find you, man? If they need some help. Yeah, yeah. We're um, I'm Kevin at capitacpa.com. Capitacpa.com is our website. I, I'm there. You know, we we we're a firm of about forty people. Okay. Um, I, I we love this stuff. Uh, we love oh, helping okay. entrepreneurs. Taxes get us in the door. <laughs> okay. I, we love helping entrepreneurs. The the crossing the t's, dotting the i's on mm-hmm. the 1040, 1065, All important stuff. Um, but you know, we love we love the planning. You know, we love we love collaborating. Um, you know, having these conversations because you, you just don't know. You know, uh, you know, you know. We're we're the, I don't know a month or so ago, right? We're just sitting here. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Oh, you know, tell me what's going on. What happened? What happened last year? What's going on this year? Yeah. Um, and, and ideas come. Yeah. Right. You have to have the conversation. You have to have somebody you're comfortable with. Not all CPAs are created the same. Not all CPAs want to talk to you. Uh, but we do. But, you know, at the same time, you know, it's not going to be 400 bucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're worth it. Look, I can tell you this right now. You know, we, 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 you handle all our entities, which is like a lot, right? And we, we spend a lot of money, mm-hmm. but it, it's been worth it, right? So I, I'll tell you for Kevin, I trust him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I trust him. He knows everything about me, everything about my family, my finances, everything like that. And I know that he's going to do me well. So if you're going to go out and you're going to get a CPA, remember, Please, if a CPA doesn't respond to you, he doesn't call you back, or she doesn't call you back, and they're not replying to your emails, just, God, Lord Jesus, drop them like a hot potato. Find somebody who cares, who's going to walk with you, talk with you, plan with you, encourage you, and strategize with you so that you can grow your business. That's right. Kevin, I want to say thank you so much for being on the show, brother. Yeah, thank you for having me, Ed. Uh, good, good to talk to something else other than, you know, taxes. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Well, thank you for watching the show, everyone. Again, and like I always going to say, you're the best part of the Ed Fernandez Show. You guys have a great weekend.